The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the January 18th, the terrific Thursday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you've got a question but you can't call in, we've got you covered. You can always send me an email. Send that off to steve at tfnn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tigers, then well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on Terrific Thursday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, we got a mixed bag out there. The mix goes like this. The Dow's down 72. The S&P is up 16. The Nasdaq's up 177. The Russell's down about two points. Semis are up 117. Trendy's up 75. New York Stock Exchange trading down 18. Gold's up nine. Silver's up seven pennies. Lights Recruit is up 75 cents. Natural Gas is back 12 pennies. 30-year Treasury printed out at 120.06. That's off 12 ticks. If we take a look at the leaders in the clubhouse, you got Granger WW, 35 points. The upside, broad. Broadcom, 35 points. That's a 3% move. Lamb Research, 30 bucks. That's a 4% move. KLA Corp, 4.5% move. Asmill Holdings, 2.5% or 17 buckaroonies. To the downside, it is Humana, off 51 bucks, 11%. United Health, 16 bucks, 3%. Elevin Cell, 15 bucks, 3%. Synopsis, 12 bucks, 2 and 3 tenths percent. Molina Healthcare, 11 bucks, 2 and 7 tenths percent out there. That healthcare sector getting the schnocker kicked out of it but i want to look at what you want to look at so what do you want to look at well let's go do this here first what's going on inside the market we talked about this yesterday let's talk about it today that's that new york stock exchange that advanced decline oscillator that is panel number three again the advanced decline oscillator is nothing more than the difference between the 19 and the 39 period exponential moving average of the advanced decline line that happens to be shown up here as well that's in panel number two now when that indicator gets below minus 150, we get into oversold territory. You can see I've got the minus 150, even a minus 250 level out here, and I got a plus 150. When you get above plus 150, that tells you we are in overbought condition out here. Well, right now we're dealing with the oversold condition. What you and I don't know just yet is, is this oversold condition going to get worked off by creating a divergence pattern? Let's see, the most recent divergence pattern came at the lows out here back in October. And what we saw taking place there is we saw the advanced client oscillator make its lower low, its lowest reading during that time period on October 23rd. Not lowest reading overall, but during this uh, cycle of getting back to that 150 level out there. And then what we saw was a series. We saw price continue to move lower. And then we had the advanced client oscillator making higher lows out there. That's the type of divergence. We go back to the one prior to that. That would take us into the bottom that formed in August out there. Other uh, times, we can come back and take a look when you get down to the minus 150 level, where you just simply take off topside. And that, for example, that was back in July of uh, 2021 we take a look at that we even had where the spot volatilix uh was above its 50-day exponential moving that's that's the very bottom panel that i have on my chart out here so usually that oversold condition either gets worked off by a straight shot moving to the upside 
or you get a divergence. Now, at 11.10 in the morning, it's still pretty early, right? We're only a couple hours into the session, not even two hours into the trading session here. Right now, it's signaling to me that this will be more of a divergence. Uh, why? Because you got price that's actually ticked a little bit lower out here. Um, with a little bit of a little fish hook, so to speak, that's forming, it looks like, on the uh, an advanced client oscillator. But time will tell, day's end, at the end of the day. But we, what's important to understand is we are in the oversold market condition. Now, it's also important to understand that that spot volatility is below its 50-day exponential moving average. The bottom panel of the screen is a is a spot volatility. That red line is the 50-day exponential moving average. What this shows us is how the S&P 500 generally responds when price is above or below the 50-day exponential moving average. Right now, we are above it. And so, in essence, that would require me to put a little bit of a red uh, box. And, and no long, I don't know how long we will be in this condition, but. If, in fact, the spot volatility, so because we're still here, we could easily call, or Stevie can easily call, the rally that we're seeing nothing more than just that oversold condition trying to be worked off. It could mean something different if that spot volatility were to close below the 50-day exponential moving average. The 50-day, as we speak right now, is printed at 1372. Uh, price is trading at, I don't, uh, where is it, at uh, 1430. 1430, uh, 1437. So 1372 is the 50-day exponential moving average. That would be the level to watch out there. Now, that's what's going on with regard to with regard to uh, this at least this morning's rally. So a question might be: Let's come back and take a look at the equity futures here. And here are the daily equity futures. So what do we know? I mentioned earlier during the 11 a.m. update that if in fact the uh, uh, NQ closed above 1703375, that is the high from a couple of days ago. The reason why that's important is because that's the high of the pattern. Yes, it was a bearish engulfing candle. There's the, what you don't see here is there's a road momentum indicator signal that's been triggered, but we never got a bearish reversal candle on the way down to confirm that top. Well, we got that yesterday, but a close above 1703.375 negates that signal. We'll go take a look at where the oscillator and change line is during the show. I'm sure as we take a look at some of the uh, some of the intraday charts for the NQ. Uh, but if we do get a close above the 1703.375, odds favor moving back towards its uh, all-time high. Or maybe we're going to take out that all-time high. What do you mean, Stevie? Well, look, if we take a look at the ES Mini right now, we've got a uh, we've got a profile change in trend signal. We got that uh, yesterday when when price closed below the profile that we're using on this black background chart. That's up at the 47.99, 50 ish or 75 level. We've got a, a profile change in trend inside the Dow that would suggest moving back towards 36.987. That happens to be the bottom of its weekly profile. There's an A to B equal CD to the downside inside of the Russell that gives us a one-to-one -one price projection of 1804. But remember, the oversold condition has got to be worked off. That's going to take place over the course of the next several days. Or maybe it takes a week or so for that condition to work itself off. This is the equity future contract, the daily time frame in U.S. dollars. I have been, certainly over the last uh, few weeks out here, I periodically had brought this up. I kind of was um, somewhat... Uh, aggressive about it. I don't know what the right word to use is out here. It's so important to understand how these markets are trading in other major currencies. In fact, I've created this chart here for you. Here's the uh, Dow, here are the equity future contracts, and you can see them. You can study this during the uh, during the breakout here in yen, British pounds, and euros. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, uh, folks. So I, I've got this chart out here uh, for, for you, for us, and so forth. Yesterday, at the very end of the show, uh, I was uh, uh, trying to answer a question. I only had just a few seconds out there. The question came from uh, John or Z inside the Tiger's Den. His question is, do I see the high that came in at the end of the year being a significant high? My response was, no, I don't see it being a significant high. And the reason is because of how the indices, the Dow, the S&P, the NASDAQ, how they are trading in other currencies. We cannot be myopic. We need to understand what's going on across the globe to get a better idea. What I can guarantee is if we go take a look at charts out here, whether it's the S&P or the futures contracts, is when we have significant declines, it's moving lower. Those instruments are moving lower in all the major currencies out here. That is not the condition that we have today on January 18th. We've been talking about the NQ. I'll just stay with the NQ. Do you know, did you know, the NQ is at a new all-time high today. It was a new all-time high yesterday, but a new all-time high today in terms of yen. So if you're sitting over in Japan right now, are you really thinking about shorting the NASDAQ? Those folks are buyers, just as the people that are over in the UK are. We are at a new all-time high today in British pounds. We are at a new all-time high today in terms of euros and the NQ. So that says to me that the NQ is very likely going to go at least target our all-time high. If not, go ahead and take it out just like it has in all these major currencies. I would say the latter is more likely that we are going to see a new all-time high inside of the NQ. I'm not saying that it's going to be today, and we're going to go take a look at its charts and understand what's going on in the intraday basis out there to help us out. If we take a look at the S&P 500, or the ES Mini, that's your top row out there. We're at a new all-time high in terms of yen. We're not at a new all-time high in terms of British pound. cool thing was I was able to get the profiles to actually work here. 
Um, so we are at breakout. We are, Although we're not a new all-time high in terms of euros, we are trading above resistance, the top of its bearish structure profile out there. So that is a bullish signal. In terms of yen, we're at a new all-time high today in terms of the uh, Dow. Not so much uh, in terms of uh, pounds, euros, or U.S. dollar index. So this is so important to take a look at. Now, what we were looking at yesterday was the S&P 500 priced in all of these other currencies out here. So Australian dollars, as an example, those people that are short in the S&P 500. I'm not saying don't, but I'm saying be aware that if you're taking a look at traders that are over in Australia, the folks that are watching the Australian Open right now, those people are buyers. We're at a new all-time high, the S&P 500, in terms of Aussie dollars. Same thing with regard to yen. Same thing with regard to euros out there. We're not a new all-time high in terms, of, uh, in terms of U.S. dollars out there, but we will be we don't make new all-time highs in the S&P 500 and other major currencies and then not do it inside our own currency out there. At least I haven't been able to uh, find, uh, find that instance out there. So we need to understand globally what's going on with these markets out here. We also want to understand how is price trading, for example, in relationship to the 2023 highs out there. I think I've got a chart like that. Um, yeah, I've got this chart. Now, this chart here shows most, uh, many of the the the, the more significant uh, ETF structures it, that can be used internationally out there. And when you trade above the 2023 high, that's a bullish condition. Now, you want to go back to those chart or uh, those ETFs and see if there's any kind of topping signals or not. But for example, in India right now, India is trading above, just trading above its 2023 high. Who else is trading above the 2023 high out here? Uh, Japan. The EWJ is trading above its 2023 high. So those are also, as well as like you start trading below the 2023 low out there, that's a bad scene. I think we, it might have been China. We might have been looking at that yesterday. Um, I don't see that on this chart out here. Um, but in any event, so, so just make sure that we, 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 we understand what's going on with regard to these indices across the globe out there. And you want to do this most certainly with gold. You want to do this with uh, – because you want to understand the buyers and sellers out there. So now let's go take a look at those NQ charts. Let's go ahead and change screens. And let's take a look at what's going on from an intraday standpoint with regard to the NQ. So now – We've got the daily time frame, upper left. We are starting to trade above its green oscillator and change line. <laughs> We're above the profile. We've already established that. And if we close the day above that green oscillator and change line, 17072 is the uh, print on that. That is a bullish signal. And we go ahead and we make a, a move towards that all-time high, very likely at least take it out. May just be poke above it, but we most certainly would let – oh, I didn't, you're not seeing it. Here you go. Now you should see the white background charts. Thank you, Mr. Bill. So here is in the upper left-hand corner is what I'm uh, referring to out here. And if we take a look at it, you can see it's just trading just above its green oscillator and change line. If we take a look at the five-hour time frame chart, price is going to negate a TD9 count breakout, breakdown level at 70.2850. Now, this candle here doesn't complete until 2 p.m. It's only 11.30. If at 2 p.m. price is above that, 17.02850, that is a bullish signal for the five-hour time frame chart. The uh, four-hour time frame chart is already bullish because price is above the top of its profile. There's no other resistance, no other pattern signal to worry about. Same with the two-hour time frame chart. The 60-minute chart negated a TD9 count top. That says it's got a strong upward momentum move that is underway right now. I would say do not short the NQ. And then you kind of have to ask yourself the question, should you really be shorting the uh, S&P uh, or the Dow or even the Russell if the NQ is going to lead things higher out there? Well, you've got a 60-minute negated TD9 count top. Now, if we take a look at that 30-minute time frame chop, uh, chart out there, it negated its TD9 count top. It's got a rose momentum indicator signal, but that requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm that short-term top. No topping signal on the 15-minute, no topping signal on the 10-minute chart either. So with regard to the NQ, we already took a look at it with regard to what it's doing in other currencies. We're taking a look at now just the U.S. dollar index. Now, I'm not saying that if we go take a look at the other equity future contracts that they're going to go ahead and match us. In fact, let's just for the last two minutes, then we'll go uh, immediately into the requests out there. Let's just go throw up the chart for the ES Mini. And let's see what it is signaling to you and I out here. Remember, you've also got the uh, – well, I haven't really taken a look at the so uh, the socks out there. But I think there was a request to take a look at the SMH. So uh, let me put that down on my screen out there. And we'll certainly take a look at that and see where that's trading, which is, I believe, is at a new all-time high, if I'm not mistaken. But here we take a look at the ES Mini. The difference between this daily chart – 
and the one on my black background screen is here we're just consolidating with inside of profile levels this is still populating the five hour time frame chart looks like it's setting up an a to b equals cd to the upside it, nope okay now that now that we've got a pipeline so they got a 10 minute a 10 minute a five hour td9 count bottom Price is trading with inside its bullish structured profile. It's above the center line of that. This tells you and I that what it wants to do is go target 4808.80. Can't do that, but 4808 to 4815. If we look at the 240 minute time frame chart, it's got to confirm by the D point pattern within profile. It's also bullish structured. 4808 is its price target. If we look at a 120 minute time frame chart, what do we have out here? Price is taking on its breakdown resistance level at 4,700.75. On a two hour chart, this is going to close at 12 noon. If price closed at 12 noon, about 4,700.75, it's saying don't be short. The 60 minute chart has a TD9 count top. So if you are short, okay, and then you're trading on a 60 minute time frame, I get it, I understand that. Recognize that TD9 count top also took place at 4,796.75. But if we get a close above that TD9 count high, and that level, this one you'd be watching is 4797.50. You get a close above that on an hourly basis. This is telling us that the ES Mini is headed higher out there. No topping pattern on the 30-minute time frame chart. We have a TD9 count top on the 10-minute chart, or 15-minute chart, I should say. That gets negated with a close above 47.93. And um, in the case of the 10-minute chart, its pattern will get negated with a close above 47.9750 out there. Steve Rhodes with TFNM. We're going to take a look at TSM, Cyber, CFLT, BAC, Smuckers, and the SMHs. We'll get back from this break. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Don't 
forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome uh, back, uh, folks. So we're going to take a look at uh, two uh, symbols here. The first one's going to be Taiwan Semiconductor. This is for uh, Roger. Uh, Roger has been in this uh, for a while, and you're loving uh, this week's uh, price action. That is for sure. Now, if we take a look at my screens out here, I want you to focus first on the uh, weekly and the uh, monthly time frame chart. You've been in this for a while, so you're more of an intermediate term uh, time trader out there. And this week, basically tomorrow, if price closes above 110.69, uh, first, there's 50. There were 74 million shares that traded that uh, day. Taiwan Semiconductor yesterday did about 28 million shares, 17 million shares a day before. So this may take out that. That, that would be the B point of an A to B equals CD. Well, first, if you close above 110.69, you're going to trigger an A to B equals CD pattern to the upside. Period. If you get it with volume, well, then you're going to have a confirmed A to B equals CD. Now, that price projection level would get you to 135.28. That's the same A to B equals CD pattern that we would get out here on the monthly time frame. In essence, it's using that same set of swing points, the TD9 count bottom from November of 2022, the high that came in in June of 2023, and then you're using the low of September of 2023. Now, that one-to-one, -one, as I mentioned, gets us up to 135.28. At 128.66 is going to be what I see as your next resistance level. That happens to be the week or the monthly TD9 count breakdown resistance level. But Taiwan Semiconductor, no topping signal on the daily. Now, you're negating topping signals on the week. Uh, no topping signal on the monthly. Taiwan Semiconductor, Roger, looks like it's going to work out for you, at least at this stage of the uh, game out here. Let's go take a look at your next request. The next request was to take a look at CYBR, that is cyber out there. I, I, folks, you obviously needed me to tell you that, but it's CyberArk Software. CyberArk Software is trading a new all-time high as we speak today. Now, in this case here, today is going to form bar number eight, Roger. That says you could get a, at least a short-term top between today and Tuesday of next week. Bar number, the TD9 count pattern can top on bars eight, nine, or the bar following nine. Now, one of those bars has to be the high of the pattern. It doesn't have to be a closing high, just has to be a tick high out there. So you could be getting a TD9 count top anywhere between today and Tuesday. A price would have to close below that oscillator and change line uh, to get your interest out there. That's currently printed at 227.90. In other words, if price doesn't close below that, just pulls back and tests it, that is a bullish signal out there. The reason why I suggested that in CyberArk it would just be a short-term top that could form out here is because the weekly has negated or is ne has negated its TD9 count top. So that suggests that it wants higher price. Now, that's the weekly time frame chart. Where this gets a little bit more confusing, Roger, and sorry about that, I'll just apologize ahead of time, is on a monthly basis, you're going to go ahead and complete bar number nine of a TD9 count. You also have a Rhodes Mentum indicator signal that is present. But again, remember, it can be the bar following bar number nine that identifies that top. So the weekly chart says to me, price wants to continue to move higher. The monthly chart just says, be uh, aware of a topping pattern that could form between uh, this month and uh, next month out there in February out there. And the daily time frames just says a caution signal. So of the two, Taiwan Semiconductor looks a little bit better, but this still looks good. And I would stay with this trade at least at the moment. So Raj, I hope that that helped you out. And thank you so much for uh, your request. Duncan, Steve inside the Tiger's Den would like to take a look at CFLT. And as we take a look at this, this is trading out right now at 2162. CFLT, oops, hold on a second here, CFLT, is uh, taking on its bullish structured daily profile support level out there. And that is really the support level inside of CFLT, Stevo, is between the price range of 2164 and 2195. Now, price is also trading into a swing point. That's a little swing point that formed out here on January the 4th. Now, that swing point had volume of 3.8 million shares. You've done 1.3 million in the first hour, two hours of trading. So you're pulling into that swing point with similar volume. If price were to close below 21.32, you would trigger an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here. Now, let me just, on my other screen, I just want to see what that retracement level would be of that pattern out there and that's really that would be the small a to b equals cd i might have to pull this chart back just a tad lower but what was that retrace it was a i think i was a 0.382 it was 37.2 percent retracement out there the reason why 
No, so that that would you'd have a small A to B equals C D, a price close below twenty one thirty two. So that's what I'd be watching there, Duncan, and that would give you an initial price projection of eighteen fifty. We can see that the weekly chart. Price ran into resistance at its oscillator and change line, and right now it's currently printing below the top of that profile. The top of that weekly profile is at the um, 2181 level. So if it closes the week below 2181, that's a signal that it wants lower price. And on a monthly basis, price is taking on profile support. That's at 2201, but it's still too early in the month to make a determination as to whether that's going to hold or not out here. Um, so CFLT... Uh, I'd, I'd watch those levels again, the profile level on the daily time frame, the swing point on the daily time frame, and that will give you your clue as to what it's doing. So on the daily time frame, the price point that's most important is 21.32. Dunk, you also wanted to take a look at BAC out here. So let's get their charts up on our screen. As we take a look at uh, Bank of America, what do we have? On a daily time frame, we don't have much. Price is pulling back into an area of potential support, and that's being this little breakout session. So this broke out with volume, 60 million shares. That was on December 13th, added to it with 107 million shares on December 14th. So price is pulling back into that area. We don't have any kind of A to B equals CD to the downside pattern. Maybe what Bank of America will do is bottom with a TD9 count bottom. That's the only potential pattern that I see at this moment in time out here, Steve-O. So I'd watch for that. Now, that couldn't take place until uh, today is 6, tomorrow would be Sunday, it would be 7. So it would be Monday through Wednesday of next week when that potential exists. And it is a real potential out there. We've got a nice TD9 count top on the weekly time frame, and price is pulled back and it has tested both the top of a new profile, that's at 31.47, and its oscillator and change line, or very close to it at 31.24. Now, the odd thing here, and it's not really so odd, Sometimes we don't get patterns on our intraday charts. Well, I'm looking at a weekly chart, so I consider the intraday chart and the intraday time frame, I really should say, would be the daily time frame out there. So sometimes we may not get a bottom pattern on that daily time frame, Steve-O, but we do know that price is pulling back into an area of support with lighter volume. Even yesterday's candle uh, session here did volume of 48 million shares. Again, that was going into 60 as well as that 107 million shares. So this can be a bottom, having a TD9 count weekly top and pulling back there. Now, we're not going to call it a bottom right now. Why wouldn't we do that? Well, we'd at least need to see a close above the prior bar's high to even entertain that as an idea. Right now, we're just trading with inside yesterday's bar out there. So we don't have any kind of signal like that. Uh, that uh, the weekly support that's held is trending this thing into a daily, okay, I've bottomed and I'm going to move higher out there. So until that happens, we just have to sit tight. Watch for those two things, though, Steve-O. Uh, um, but at this stage here, it looks more like, I, I, don't, know what, I don't know what it looks like. <laughs> I do know what it looks like. The question is, will price break through support? And I don't know that answer. And so that's at 3124 level. And that's the area that I would be focused on. So I hope that that helped you out, Duncan Steve. Thank you so much for taking the time to write in. And we get back to this break. We're going to take a look at Smuckers, the SMHs, XBI, and of course, anything else that you call in about. Send me an email about steve at tfn.com or a ping inside the Tiger's Den. We'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large-cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold. Traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, uh, folks. So we've got uh, all U.S. indices, well, the exception being the Wilshire 5000. That is trading to the downside. But the Dow's now up 12, the S&P's up 23, NASDAQ 221. Russell's up 1.5, Semi's up 13. I'm sorry, semis are up 131 points. Uh, trannies are up 98. We're taking a look at Smuckers out here. This is for John in Milwaukee. His question is, where's the buy price and where's the sell price out here? So you've got a TD9 count top. That formed that formed on the trading day of November of January the third, and what that has led to that's led to a sideways consolidation above profile resistance out there. So even though you've got a topping pattern, your overall signal here is neutral. It would become less neutral if price were to close below 125.94. John, that's the price that you would look at because that's where a counter trend rally, if price were to move lower, that's where a counter trend rally should end. That happens to be the center of its bearish structure daily profile out there. Your price did close below that, below that you'd be looking at 124.39 or 122.02. The weekly chart for Smuckers has a wave number seven bottom. It does not have any kind of a topping pattern. Price is above all profile resistance levels. It tells us that it wants to go target the 150.08 area. That happens to be its TD9 count breakdown level. But of course, it's going to run into some turbulence as price approaches this little gap to the downside that formed on September 15th. That was with 15 million shares. To give you an example, yesterday you went up with 5 million shares so expect there to be turbulence turbulence but i don't see a topping pattern at least on the weekly time frame we've covered the daily time frame and on a monthly chart you have a td9 count bottom and you have a profile that is formed above price that's a bearish signal but that doesn't mean that price won't go target that oscillator and change line because that's what it should do and what it should do is go target that 136.68 level let's just call it 138.88 that is likely what smuckers wants to do but it can't do that until it takes out that td9 count top and that TD9 count top was the high from January 3rd, and that high out there is 131.37 out there. So that's what I would be watching. Uh, your question was, where's the buy price and the sell price? So I'd have to go with 138.88 right now would be the potential sell price. That's, again, because we've got that monthly profile forming below price. So that's a significant resistance point out there. Where's the buy price? 122.02 would be would potentially be a nice buy price but we'd have to see what's going on if price were to get down there uh, because we've got an inside day here 
Uh, not a whole lot of uh, signal information out there. If you were really aggressive, your buy would be on some kind of uh, intraday chart out there. Just for the heck of it, let me put up uh, Smuckers. Let's trade, change it over to a 30-minute time frame from the 130-minute time frame. So let's see if there's any kind of signal information here. This did form a nice TD9 count bottom at a low out here at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. And that was on January 11th. So, you know, it's following along those patterns on a 30-minute basis. Here was another TD9 count that led to a nice rally that ended up uh, getting negated and, you know, ended up eventually failing out there. So that would be the other thing to look at would be some type of intraday pattern to get you into Smuckers, SJM. So I hope that helped you out. Thanks so much for writing in. Now, again, that was John in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I had a request to take a look at the SMHs. My apology, I did not write down who made that request out there. That's okay. We can still do it. So we take a look at the SMHs. What do we see? We're at new all-time highs today. We do not have any kind of a topping pattern on the daily time frame. Yes, it has a roach momentum indicator signal. That requires a bearish reversal candle to confirm a top. We don't have that. If we take a look at the weekly time frame chart, it is in the process of potentially negating a TD9 count top. It will accomplish that task with a close above the high for the week of December 29th. And that high out there is 176.75. Now, what also makes that high important is the fact that that was the high for the year. Again, the high for the year inside of the SMH is 176.75. That was last year. As we began the show, I had mentioned to you, when you start trading above the 2023 high, that is a bullish signal. And so the SMHs, they've given you a very bullish signal. Whether it's the daily time frame, whether it's the weekly time frame, whether it is the monthly time frame. So that looks pretty darn good. So whoever requested the SMHs, there you go. The next request was to take a look at XBI. That's coming in from McGuppy inside the Tiger's Den. So let's get over to the XBI charts out here, see what they're doing. XBI happens to be the uh, S&P Biotech ETF. And that right now, McGuppy is trading below the bottom of its bullish structure daily profile. That's at 87.70. So if it has a if it does close below that, this will generate a profile change in trend signal. Now, it's going to need two consecutive closes, McGuppy, in order to give us that signal. We can see that we had, for example, when you close below support, they do it with only one session. It's a one-hit wonder. In the case of the XBI, it did that on December the 20th, very next session, right back, back inside those profiles and back on its way to the upside. So you'd really need two consecutive closes below 87.70 to suggest that you have a profile change in trend. If you do get a profile profile change in trend, where is its price target? Well, the price target for the daily time frame would be its breakout level, and that was at 72.10. So that's what the daily time frame chart is signaling to us. How about the weekly chart? The weekly chart is going to complete a TD9 count top this week. That suggests that price should pull back to its oscillator and change line. So 82 bucks is the, what its price target is. Remember, in the daily, we said the ultimate price target, 72.10. Right now, being the 82 area, the reason it has to be area is because that's the oscillator and change line, and that's going to change as price moves up and down out there. Um, the monthly chart, I don't have any real signal here, a consolidation with inside its profile. So, McGuppy, your question was, where is this headed, and maybe why? Well, the why would be the bottom of that daily profile at 87.70. Uh, the why of where why this wants to get to 82 or so or lower is because of the weekly TD9 count. So you combine that with what's going on in a daily time frame chart, you get a second close below the bottom of that profile tomorrow. $82 or less is where the XBI is headed. So hope I provided you with that information. Where's it headed and why? And thank you so much for writing in. Nicholas writes in and he wants to take a look at AMAT. So let's go see what uh, American Tower is uh, doing out here. Uh, right now it's trading out. I'm sorry, Applied Materials. Stevie, get your act together. Let's actually change over to the screen. That would be even more helpful. Now we take a look at what Applied Materials is doing. It has gapped up. You're getting a profile change in trend signal today because price is trading above 154.83. Looks to me like it'll close above that. You're trading above profile. You're trading above a green oscillator and change line. That says it wants to head higher. Head higher to where? Well, 160.40 is the top of its weekly profile. And that's where the real battle is going on, Nicholas, is at 160.40. If price can take that out, we likely get back to its highs out there. On a monthly time frame, price is trading into its Rhodes Mintum indicator top, its all-time high, that generated volume of 203 million shares. We came up to it last month 
with 99 million shares. So far for the month, we are at 69 million shares. So we're trading into that area with volume. Expect there to be some substantial resistance at that high. That high, by the way, right now as we speak, is up at the 167.06 area out there. So I hope that helps you out. Let's go out to, oh, let's go out to Brent in Martinez, California. Brent, we've got like about 20 seconds. Uh, if you can tell me what you're looking at and what you need, I will get those charts ready for you and come back to you. So uh, good morning. Uh, what was good it morning, about AA Steve. that you're, what is it about AA that you're looking for so that I can look at that during the break? They came out their earnings uh, yesterday after the close and I did haven't done anything yet, but I'm considering possibly a trade. I just want to know if I should, there's a gap that goes back about, you know, into December and then also a low that's back a bit further in, I guess, no, October. Perfect. If those would right. be areas to be watching. Okay. Well, we'll get to that as soon as we come back from the break with Brent in Martinez, California. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at the stock charts here for Alcoa, the daily, the weekly, and the monthly. This is with Brent in Martinez, California. Uh, as Brent had pointed out, that uh, we had a nice uh, couple of signs of strength out here in Alcoa. Uh, the first one being the scap to the upside on December 14th, wide ranging bar to the upside, 16.5 million shares. Now, today so far, we're pulling into that. We are actually inside that gap, and there's 6 million shares. So, Brent, first thing I would say is today we're pulling back into that sign of strength. 
with similar type volume out there. That's the first thing I would say. The second thing I'd say is we're trading below yesterday's low, so that's a bearish signal. The third thing I would say is there's an A to B equals CD to the downside. So if we get a bullish reversal candle, that would confirm a buy the D point or a Gartley buy pattern out there. So I'd be waiting for that. Those are the patterns that I see on the daily time frame. We're in bar number five out here. I would say short of a bullish reversal candle, price would want to target its breakout level. That's a 2389 area. Any questions about the daily, Brent, before I move on to the weekly? No, I think that's it. Thank you, Steve. Perfect. On the weekly time frame, we can see that price right now is trading below its red oscillator and change line. If it closes below that tomorrow, and that be it being 26.92, that would suggest to you and I that price would get back to its buy zone. The buy zone on the weekly time frame chart is between 24.92 and 26.05. So that too is suggesting lower price. We are inside the monthly profile as well. And the monthly profile, and this is a monthly profile that formed this month, it's bullish in structure, or last month I should say, it's bullish in structure. And so it's buy zone is basically between 24.58 and 26.60. No, that can't be it. 24.58 and 27.61. So everything that I'm looking at here, Brent, I get why you're looking to potentially buy this. I'd wait for the daily time frame to generate that uh, buy pattern out there. I looked uh, during the break at intraday uh, signals, 30, 65, 130, and 195. The 130 and the 195 potentially could form TD9 count patterns, but I'd wait for that daily to give us that buy signal. We've got about 15 seconds, Brent. Any questions or anything you'd like to add? Oh, just thank you so much, Steve. Steve, uh, have a great day and, and have a great uh, weekend as well. Perfect. You do that. Brent's going to have a great day. And folks, I'd love you to have a great day as well. Have a terrific Thursday. I'll see you on Fantastic Friday. Take care. Be safe out there.